following day, the whole kingdom woke to rumors of the crystal shoe, and of how the beautiful and mysterious princess had stolen the prince's heart. They learned how she suddenly left him as the clock struck midnight, and how a royal search party for the girl whose foot would fit the crystal shoe had been organized. It was ordered that all the young ladies in the kingdom were to try. Kingdom were to try on the shoe. Whosoever the shoe fitted, the prince would take as his bride. There were squeals of delight from the stepsisters when they heard that the prince's messenger was on his way. My foot is going to fit. I just know it. Squeaked Camilla, gazing at her painted toenails. I'll be surprised. Hooted Daniela. You have feet like kippers. Mine are half the size of yours, so I'm a hundred times more likely to be the prince's bride. Their mother came in just in time to stop the quarrel. Now, girls, I want you to look your best. Cinderella, help your sisters, and then go and stay in the kitchen. They won't want to see you. You weren't at the ball. The royal messenger arrived, and Camilla was first to try on the shoe. She heaved and pushed her foot in as far as she could, but it was clearly never going to fit. Daniela smirked and muttered, "Kipper feet," under her breath. It was her turn next. She pushed and tried as hard as she could to squeeze her foot into the shoe. Suddenly, she screamed that she had cramp in her toe. She yelled and squealed and pulled such ugly faces that the page boy and the royal messenger found it hard not to laugh. Oh dear! The shoe does not fit either girl or any other girl in the kingdom. We have visited them all, sir. The page boy informed the royal messenger. The messenger then turned to Cinderella's father, who had been watching patiently, and asked hopefully. Have you no other daughters? Ah, yes, I have a daughter. I believe she'll be in the kitchen. He replied. But she didn't go to the ball. Interrupted his wife. But our orders are that she must still try on the shoe. Said the messenger. The stepmother went and called for Cinderella. Cinderella appeared in her old clothes and apron and sat down to try on the shoe. Of course, her dainty little foot slipped into it with ease. Everyone in the room gasped. Goodness, it fits! Cinderella then produced the other shoe from her apron pocket and put it on. There was a flash of blue light, and once more she appeared in her ball gown, as beautiful as ever before. The royal messenger immediately took Cinderella to the palace, where the prince was waiting for news of his lost princess. Success, your royal highness! We have found the girl whose foot fits the crystal slipper. Reported the messenger. The prince smiled and gazed at Cinderella's pretty face. He knew instantly that this was the girl that he had fallen in love with at the ball. The prince took her hand. My dearest Mirabella, will you do me the greatest honor and be my bride? Cinderella nodded and smiled. She could hardly believe what was happening to her. Her stepmother fainted. When she came to, she was angry at Cinderella's father for telling the royal messenger about his daughter. They would certainly have chosen one of my daughters to marry the prince if that dreadful Cinderella hadn't appeared. So, in a huff, she packed their bags, took all the money left with her two daughters, and they were never seen nor heard of again. Please, ladies, try on the shoe. Me first. Your feet won't fit. They're much too big. Me first. My foot is going to fit. I just know it. Can you stop the quarrel? Tap on the sister that you think should try on the shoe first. Ah! Ow! 
Ouch! My foot is stuck! Help! The shoe doesn't fit you, lady. Oh, no! It's too small! It won't even fit my big toe! Please, may I try? How can it be your shoe? You weren't at the ball. I have been ordered to search the kingdom far and wide, and whosoever this shoe fits shall be the prince's pride. She can't be the princess at the ball. I don't believe it. My lady, the shoe fits perfectly. I will take you to the palace where the prince is waiting for you. This dress is beautiful. This is wonderful. I feel like a princess. The royal wedding was announced. When the day came, bells rang, clocks chimed, and a public holiday was given. Everybody celebrated with feasting, music, and dancing in the streets. It was a glorious day. Cinderella's father walked her proudly down the aisle. The king and queen gave them their blessing, and with a wave and with a wave of her magic wand, so too did Cinderella's fairy godmother. The prince had found the girl of his dreams, and Cinderella, or should I say, Mirabella, had found her one true love. Needless to say, they all. Lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm.